This tutorial is for the flatbed scanner we use here in the laboratory, which is an Epson Perfection V800. Along with the scanner, we will be using Epson's Epson Scan software. The flatbed scanner can be used for many different types and sizes of documents. These documents may include photos, Polaroids, photo negatives, 35mm slides, 4x5-inch film, and medium film. There are a few things you'll need to do before your appointment. The first thing you'll need to do is organize your documents. For this scanner, you just need to organize your documents by event, location, or date. This will help you organize them into folders when you scan them. Once all of your documents are organized, You'll need to decide how you will save your digital files. You will need to provide your own storage device. Some common options are CDs, flash drives, SD cards, or external hard drives. For your convenience, the Friends of LCPL offer CDs and flash drives for sale. CDs are $1 each, and a 16 gigabyte flash drive is $8. When you arrive for your appointment, the scanner and the computer will both be on with the Epson Scan software open and ready for you to use. Make sure you insert your CD or plug in your flash drive, SD card, or external hard drive. For single photos and documents, you will place them at the top right corner of the scanner as you see here. If you are scanning multiple items, make sure to leave about an inch of space between each item so that the scanner will recognize them as individuals instead of just one big item. The flatbed scanner has four different guides for scanning film. There's one for slides, 35mm film, medium film, and 4x5-inch film. When placing the guides on the scanner, you will line the white arrows up and allow the film guides to fit into the notches on the right side of the bed. Also, when scanning film, make sure to remove the document map. This will allow light to shine through the film when scanning. Finally, when placing slides or film on the scanner, make sure to place them shiny side down. Before we start scanning, I'm going to walk you through several of Epson Scan's features. First, let's take a look at the different scanning modes. Epson Scan has three scanning modes full auto mode, home mode, and professional mode. For this tutorial, I am only going to be going over full auto and home mode. For more information about professional mode, you can click help at the bottom left corner of the window to access the official help menu. Full Auto Mode is the most basic option. This mode is best for people who may be new to Epson Scan and people who want few or no enhancements added to their documents as they are scanned. When you open Full Auto Mode, this is the screen you will see. The first thing you should do is select Customize. In this window, you can select the type of documents being scanned, the scan resolution, dust removal, color restoration, and auto photo orientation. Once you have selected the options you want applied to your documents, select File Save Settings. In this window, you can select your file location, name, and format. To select your storage device, click on Other and then Browse. Then, scroll down to your device. You can create a folder for your documents in this device by right-clicking on your device, then selecting New, and Folder from the drop-down menu. Remember to name your folder, too. Once you have selected your storage device, click OK. Next, you can choose to add a prefix to your photos. Doing this can help you organize them by person, event, date, or any other identifier. When scanned, your photos will be saved with this prefix and a number. You can go through and rename them later. Next, 
you can choose the format your files will be saved as. Typically, for documents we recommend PDF, and for everything else we recommend JPEG. Near the bottom of this window, you will see four more options. In full auto mode, only two of these options are available. We recommend not selecting overwrite any files with the same name, because doing so may cause you to accidentally delete files if you are not careful. However, you can select open image folder after scanning. This way, you can verify that your files are saved to the correct place each time you scan. Once you are done in this window, select OK. Now that you've loaded your documents and selected your settings, it's time to scan your documents. Do this by clicking on Scan. While your documents are being scanned, you will first see this window. This shows that Epson Scans technology is determining what type of documents you have placed on the flatbed. Next, you will see this window when Epson Scan is scanning your documents. When it is done, Epson Scan will close. Your file location window will pop up if you selected that option. To continue scanning, place new documents on the flatbed, open Epson Scan, and select Scan. Epson Scan saves the settings from the previous scan, so you do not need to select Customize again unless you're going to save a new document to a different location. When you are finished, close out of Epson Scan. Don't forget to close and eject your flash drive, external drive, or CD. Home mode is the medium scale option. This mode is best for people who may be new to Epson Scan and people who want more options than full auto mode, but do not need professional level options. When you open home mode, this is the window you will see. The first thing you should do is select the file folder in the bottom right corner of the window. Here, you can select your file location, name, and format. To select your storage device, click on Other and then Browse. Then, scroll down to your device. You can create a folder for your photos in this device by right-clicking on your device, then selecting New and Folder from the drop-down menu. Remember to name your folder, too. Once you've selected your storage device, click OK. Next, you can choose to add a prefix to your photos. Doing this can help you organize them by person, event, date, or any other identifier. When scanned, your photos will be saved with this prefix and a number. You can go through and rename them later. Next, you can choose the format your files will be saved as. Typically, for documents we recommend PDF, and for everything else we recommend JPEG. Near the bottom of this window, you will see four more options. We do not recommend selecting Overwrite Any Files with the Same Name, because doing so may cause you to accidentally delete files if you are not careful. However, we do recommend that you select the other three options, as they will be helpful later when you start scanning. Once you are done in this window, select OK. The next thing you should do is select your document type. Click here to bring up the drop-down menu. If you are unsure about which type of document you have, feel free to ask a staff member for help. Next, select whether you want your document saved in color, grayscale, or black and white. Then, select the destination or resolution you want your document saved in. Selecting screen slash web or printer will result in a default resolution that is appropriate for each of those destinations. If you want a different resolution, select other. Then, you can adjust the resolution by clicking here and selecting a resolution from the drop-down menu. Remember, the higher the resolution, the longer it will take to scan your documents. Under Destination, you will see Image Adjustments. The availability of each of these options will vary depending on what type of document you are scanning. Descreening removes the ripple pattern that might appear in subtly shaded image areas, such as skin tones. This is best for magazines or newspapers. Backlight correction removes shadows from photos that have too much background light. 
Color restoration improves faded colors. Digital ice technology removes stubborn dust and scratch marks. Text enhancement sharpens text. Auto area segmentation scans the text in black and white while retaining grayscale images. You can also adjust the brightness and contrast of your document by selecting brightness and moving the guides to make your document darker or lighter or to change the contrast. Finally, let's take a look at configuration. In this window, you will see four tabs, Preview, Color, Film Size, and Other. For the sake of this tutorial, we are only going to look at the Film Size tab. If you would like to learn more about the other options in the other tabs, click Help in the bottom right corner of this window. If you are scanning medium format film, this is where you will select the size. This will help the scanner properly identify and scan the film. Once you've selected the correct size, click OK to go back to the main window. In Home Mode, you have to select Preview before you can scan documents. This is the window you will see while Epson Scan is creating your preview. There are a number of ways to view your preview, such as by rotating it or changing the size. When you are scanning multiple documents, viewing your preview as thumbnails is a good way to make sure that the scanner is identifying them each as separate documents. Once you have previewed your documents, you can select Scan. The first window you will see is the File Save Settings window. Since we already chose these settings earlier, you can just use this as an opportunity to make sure everything looks OK. When you're ready, click OK. Next, you'll see this progress bar while your documents are being scanned. When scanning is finished, the folder you saved your documents to will open. This is useful so that you can make sure they got saved to the right location. Once you have verified that your documents have been saved properly, you can close out of this window. To continue scanning, place new documents on the flatbed, then select Preview again. If the preview looks good, select Scan and then OK. When you're finished, close out of Epson Scan. Don't forget to close and eject your flash drive, external drive, or CD.